This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP ZBook 17G6. It's a mobile workstation. HP does make thinner and lighter mobile workstations. For those of you who are already thinking, ha, 2005 called and wants its laptop back. Yes, it's big. 7 pounds, which is 3.2 kilograms, so compared to today's gaming laptops, it's 17.3 inches. It's not that heavy, but it's 33.8 millimeters, so it is pretty thick. But the point of this is the point that you can do this, but you have something that is so incredibly powerful. You can get this with up to a Core i9, 8-core CPU, 45 watt, or an Intel Xeon as well. It'll cost you some money to do that, but it's extremely powerful. And up to NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 graphics, and now AMD Radeon Pro W. 550M for those of you who prefer Radeon graphics cards. You can go up to 128 gigs of memory. You have three M.2 SSD slots and a hard drive bay. And oh my god, a Blu-ray writer drive too. Wow. Oh, and an HP Dreamcolor 4K display wide gamut. One of the nicest wide gamut displays on the market for professional use. We are going to look at it now. So those of you who are considering something like an HP Spectre X360, clearly this is not your kind of laptop. This is for corporate buyers who have plenty of money to spend. <laughs> I'll get into the pricing in a minute. This is for people who are doing serious kinds of content creation on the go. And I don't even mean just doing maybe a couple of multi-stream 4K videos for YouTube kind of thing. I'm talking about VR development, not VR consumption. You don't need something this powerful potentially for that. Uh, 3D rendering, uh, not the light, easy lifting. I took home a little project. This is, I took home a gosh darn big project and I'm going to work on it on the road, whatever. You get the idea. Data analysis, all of that sort of stuff. So that's why this exists. And that's why it's a big hunking machine. There are other mobile workstations that are kind of passable if you must use them on the go. This one, it makes few compromises. You're not going to be running back to your desktop in desperation unless you have the world's most complicated VR project going on. So you can get this with a 4K dream color display and that's $588 more. And that's a matte display. It's IPS technology and it's wide gamut. And there's a little color calibration sensor built right into the keyboard deck area, which is kind of nice. And there's five pre-calibrated profiles. So Adobe RGB, sRGB, DCI-P3, you get the idea. They did a pretty good job. Sometimes the gamut suffers and gets a little bit narrowed in the interest of making it color accurate. Overall, they did a good job. For our gamut tests, which you'll see, I, I ran it at the Adobe RGB preset before testing it. There is a full HD, about 95% of sRGB display for those of you who are not doing content where that really matters so much, the color quality and all that sort of thing. And there's a 4K touchscreen option listed. It's, it's not dream color as far as I can see. Also 95% of sRGB. Uh, that's on HP's website as a potential feature. I didn't see a way to order that. You can get this with up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM. Two slots are accessible, two slots are not so accessible. You have to flip the other side of the motherboard on it. So HP says that they typically populate the top less accessible slots first to make life easier for you. This has three M.2 SSD slots. Two are NVMe, one is SATA 3, and there's a two and a half inch hard drive slash two and a half inch SSD bay there as well. And yes, there is that modular Blu-ray writer, and there's actually a different module you can snap in apparently that has yet another M.2 SATA drive bay on board. And we have a 95.6 watt hour battery, which is getting close to the limit of what airlines let you carry on board. That's why you don't see 100 or higher capacity batteries. So it has Intel UHD 630 graphics as well. So switchable graphics. So those times when you're using it and you're not doing something demanding, you don't have to tank the battery life quite so fast. Good that. So this past 21 mil STD rugged test, it has a magnesium and aluminum casing. It has HP's usual BIOS guard protection, all of the stuff that you would expect. It has a fingerprint scanner, a Windows Hello IR camera is optional, and there is a webcam privacy slider switch up top. For something this size, you'd expect a lot of ports. You get it. You have HDMI 2.0, you have mini display port, you have two Thunderbolt, three ports on board for Ethernet, full-size SD card slot, a smart card reader, every, pretty much everything that you could think of. And it can support up to four displays, just the unit itself, without a dock, at 4K resolution, and that includes the internal built-in panels. So go to town there. 
in terms of performance and cooling, they say it's 20% improved thermals from the previous generation. I didn't get to review the previous generation, so I can't say if that is true or not. But I can tell you that we have the Intel Xeon model with the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 card, which in consumer speak is closest to the NVIDIA RTX 2080 card. Only this one is 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM versus the 8 in the consumer card. So super powerful internals here. And I was impressed not only at the benchmark numbers and the speed at which it rendered when I tested out Blender and programs like that and SpecView perf tests, which usually take forever, ran so fast on this, but the thermals were good. In terms of CPU core temperatures, which are usually the problem with any laptop, even a thick one, <laughs> it's pretty hard to get it to break the 90s, really. Go above 95 doesn't happen very often, most of the time less than that. So yes, there's plenty of performance here. The fan noise is not annoying or egregious on this. It's well cooled, it's well done. Big thick laptop means pretty roomy, nice, comfortable keyboard. It's backlit in white, it's spill resistant. I have no complaints. You have a number pad, there's plenty of room for that number pad. It's nice to type on, good tactile feel, good travel. So content creators will enjoy that. And we have a nice trackpad with dedicated buttons and the eraser stick style pointer that is popular with ThinkPads. And that's a Microsoft Precision trackpad. It works just fine too, no complaints with that. The speakers on this are surprisingly good, which is good in case you're a content creator who actually does audio too, which this is perfectly capable of doing. Stereo Bang & Olufsen branded speakers, HP, Usually goes with Bang & Olufsen branding there. 74 decibels of audio. It's pretty loud for a laptop. Yeah, it's full, it's rich, it's loud. Good. Getting inside is super easy. Look, Ma, no tools. It's just a little slider over here. Slide it over this way. And then slide forward like that. And bada bing. Nice metal right there. And once we take off that cover, you can see that much, but not everything is readily accessible. If you want to get to the rest of the stuff, then it does mean unscrewing some Torx T6 and other Phillips head screws to take off the rest of the bottom cover. Here are two available user accessible RAM slots without having to take more of it apart. There's a two and a half inch drive bay here. And here are two SSD drive bays. Also, here's where you would get the 4G LTE module installed if you opted for that. The battery is itself removable without having to take anything apart, which is kind of cool. You just slide these forward, grab the little pull strip, and look at that. So in theory, no tools. You could just actually take off this bottom cover and swap a battery in and out on the field. That's something you just don't see much anymore. If you want to get to the rest of the stuff, like I said, you got to take more of it apart. Two big fans. You can't see much of them here, but those are very large fans, which it would need with this much horsepower inside. So that's the HP ZBook 17 G6. It's 2020, and this is one of the most powerful mobile workstations that you can get. And HP is giving you everything they could possibly cram into a very large chassis laptop. Like I said, this is not for you everyday consumers out there looking at pretty consumer slim and light laptops. Obviously, this is purpose-built for those people who need to do 3D rendering, VR development, serious data analysis, all of those kinds of things on the go. And it costs a pretty penny, too, as mobile workstations made for corporations too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.